having people say thank you just for the experience. And they're not even saying like, ah, we love the kick drum or this or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But just to, to paint this picture and have somebody go, wow, I really enjoyed that. My name's Eddie Mapp and I'm front of house for Pantera. We are currently in Hamburg, Germany. My name is Gerald Evans. I'm the monitor engineer for Pantera and it's been uh, a really cool whirlwind. My first run with HD uh, was with Evanescence uh, last summer. I had Jim Rose with RPM Dynamics send down a package for that um, and took that out until mid-September, uh, at which point we started um, Pantera rehearsals and I had Jim put together a front of house and monitor package. Shipped that down, we jumped straight in uh, to that. And most recently I did a festival with Korn and that was uh, a festival in Las Vegas with uh, HD96 and also supplied by RPM. So I'm trying to get all the inventory out there. Sonically, it's way better than others. On the Metallica, we are adding a second drum kit which will have another rack underneath that drum kit that'll have two more DL231s in it. And then we'll have one amplifier in there that will drive the drum sub and the wedge and the shaker for the drum throne. Basically everything on stage lands at three 231s and then travels via 9680s fiber to the monitor desk. And there it's converted through AS80s to front house and monitors for redundant fiber lines. Uh, we have MADI cards installed in all the desks, so we can do virtual uh, with an MGB in monitors and front of house. So we record through uh, Wave Sound Grid. I'm recording to Tracks Live and to Pro Tools, so we have a redundant backup. And then we can do virtual sound check through the entire system, which really helps being able to listen through the PA as well as monitors at the same time. Out of that, we will be going into 49650s, also loaded with MADI cards to give us the 128 channel record that we'll need for the Metallica shows. So the audio requirements, so when we started off with the rehearsals, we started off small and basically it was just in-ears and just a couple of little speakers around so that they could hear uh, some of the songs and go over songs. And then as we started putting all of this together last November, we added some side fills to it and just a couple of wedges on stage and then everybody is on in-ears and so the wedges and the side fills were just kind of just a little bit of a feel so it's not like it was in the past where it was all wedges and it was extremely loud on stage so now it's a it's more of a contained thing for the pantera setup we actually brought the desk upstairs in the control room and kind of rebuilt the control room around the hd96 which once again it was so great to have virtual sound check have the band just starting this, getting this off the ground for the first time and being able to come up in a nice controlled environment, listen back and go, wow, that's us. I have the, the Midas HD96 for my console surface. We have three currently DL231s and I have a 152 for all my IEMs, all the outputs go to my IEMs. So I do use uh, some of the effects inside. I use uh, the graphic EQs I use on the side fills. I am using a primary source enhancer that is built into the unit for uh, a couple of vocals that are open all the time on stage that are not being used all the time, but only as, as backups. And I have a couple of reverbs that I'm using on drums and on some of the vocals. I do use the transient plugin that is on the unit for the drums, which is really nice. It kind of makes all the drums stand out a little bit. Normally shooting for consistency um, between the rooms or the venues, whatever obstacles that entails. Yeah, just regarding whatever PA setup, we, and especially dealing with different PAs every day. Yeah, we're kind of at the mercy of whatever, however creative we can get with what's given to us. Frequency coordination is the most difficult thing. When we're doing the festivals, that is the most difficult. Some of the festivals have a frequency coordinator, so they will give you frequencies and tell you what time you can turn your frequencies on. Some of the festivals we've done, it's just a free for all and you gotta stay with it all day long and, and just keep going through it. But as the bands dwindle down and you're the headliner, those frequencies open up and you can start 
allocating stuff to your units. Maintaining your health on the road, you know, limiting your exposure to, you know, other loud sounds. Finding that balance on a day-to-day -day basis. If, if you're only doing festivals, maybe it's a loud environment everywhere. So maybe trying to find a way to get away for a little while to rest your ears. What I've noticed with the Midas, when you start off with a clean slate, you have all the input channels, you just plow through them with the button, it just goes through all the channels that are there. The pop groups, making things, just hitting a button and having everything pop up, you know, on, on your fader banks and the navigation on it. And it's taken me a little bit to, to understand the whole navigation on this Midas console, but it's, I can put everything where I want it and push a button and be there. And it's great. I mean, the navigation is incredible. I think it's the weight. All I've got is my uh, the HD96 and my smart rig for, uh, for PA tuning, yeah, and for system alignment. Other than that, everything's internal in the desk. For these shows, it's been PA du jour, so we kind of get what we get on a day-to-day -day basis. And once again, having the consistency of the desk along with the power to tune the system, that's what gives us a better shot at fighting the elements every day. I like to watch I'll, I will watch the audience and when the audience are totally into it. For me, like the 90s when we did all the metal fests, when everybody's just crowd surfing, those are, those are the ones that are, stand out a lot. I started off playing drums when I was eight and uh, then played guitar when I was 10. Played in little local bands, kind of became the default sound guy as needed. And then I went to a recording school, the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Science in Tempe, Arizona. Graduated from there, moved back to Louisiana, working in small studios and clubs, until I eventually got picked up on a van and trailer tour of the U.S. and kind of never looked back. I went to school for electronics, studying electronics, ended up working for a musical distribution company in the mid to late 80s. But as I was going to college, I eventually got on the workbench and was repairing these things. And at the same time, I was mixing bands. The monitor position is a very hot seat, but just listen to the artist, what they're looking for in their mix and help them out as much as you can. Work with them, try, try to help them out because sometimes they don't have the tools to make things sound better in their in-ears their in or in their wedges. I mean, because Sometimes you're mixing some very loud wedges and you know, it can be difficult, but you know, stick with it. Love what you do and be passionate about it. I just want to say thank you so much to Midas and the whole team, Pete, Max, Chase, Jim, and everybody for all the support and you know, the list can go on. But thanks so much for making all this happening.